I've never met this man, but recognize his status as an icon in the world of comedy. His razor-sharp wit, commitment to bizarre and bigger-than-life characters, and personally influencing meteoric stars a generation after him, like Sandler, Myers, and Carey. On a small screen or cinema screen, if you've seen Dan Aykroyd on there, you've enjoyed a few laughs. Dan Aykroyd, welcome to the Cabby Presents podcast, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. It's wonderful to have you here. I'm, I'm glad to be in. I'm, I, you know, I, excited, uh, excited to be in Toronto and uh, and be in your studio and be in my old uh, broadcast home of City TV. I was uh, I was the announcer for a while. Feel free to reveal any skeletons you might have buried around here or any parts in downtown Chum, Toronto. I went on Trump a lot, of course, when I was a when I was a kid. I mean, more of the nefarious things. Uh no, we were you know we were we we, we were pretty good. Pretty good <laughs> you guys are a little choir you know, boys. Well, a little uh, you know. I did. I did get a. You know. I, I guess one of my most uh, serious transgressions in the city of Toronto was <laughs> that one afternoon I was in my 1957 Chevrolet Apache pickup truck, and uh, I was at Dundas there uh, uh, and and Young, and uh, I got a ticket for air pollution because the truck was blowing these black clouds of smoke. I ran tractor oil in it to keep it going. That engine. I ran 70 wow. weight tractor oil. I used to go to the Vidal factory out in the. The West End picked pick it up, and so one afternoon it just blew, and you couldn't see the truck for this cloud. And the constable came up and said, I, "I'm sorry, I, I've never written one of these before, but I have to write you an air pollution <laughs> ticket right now." And how much longer uh, uh, was it after that moment that you retired that that truck? That truck was left in a Loblaws parking lot, plates and VIN <laughs> stripped off, like many cars that I've had. You know, yeah. Very so nice. that's a bad story, isn't it? No, that's a, that's a well. No, but bad air pollution's good. terrible. See, so I, I, feel, I I'm glad I paid the fine, and I never have a polluting car after that. Do you remember what the fine was back in that day? Whenever For air it pollution, it was a hefty. I think it was about five hundred dollars. What? Yep. In like the seventies or eighties? I believe so. I believe so. Yeah, pollution. Yeah, yeah. Oh God. Okay. Recently in Toronto, there was a shot made by a basketball player named Kawhi Leonard. Uh, worldwide, the... man. How can you? How about the frenzy worldwide about that? Was not wonderful. Did that unite the world? A wonderful <laughs> moment. It definitely united our country. I'm yeah, not sure about but, the world. But in, you, there was no. There was coverage in Turkey and Thailand. Every. You know, billions were watching that game, and and you had all these announcers from around the world watching the game and commentating, uh, in the, in these la- in their, all their languages respectively about this goal. It, it it was really like the whole globe came together on that. <laughs> Your yeah. improv skills are magical. No, no, so- the guy in Turkey was on the air. I'm, I'm not, you know, I wouldn't lie to you. I can I can really spin if you want me to spin, but. All around the world, I heard all these uh, commentators in foreign languages, you know, just cheering this this wonderful goal, this wonderful young man. Being that it's an audio medium as well as a video medium, I'm just going to describe it for the audience, for, for those who don't remember this play. So four seconds left in the game. It's tied. It's game seven on Toronto's court. Raptors are playing the Philadelphia 76ers. Kawhi Leonard gets the ball. He moves to his right. He elevates over two defenders, and he shoots a fadeaway. It bounces once. It bounces twice. It bounces thrice. It bounces a fourth time and then sinks. So oh, the the stadium erupts. Yeah. Game winning basket was shot. The Raptors advance to the next round. So two photographs. One by Keyshawn Mystery is a photograph of Kawhi in mid elevation, and the other photograph is by Rick Madonna, who works for the Toronto Star, where Kawhi is crouched, just looking at the basket, waiting in suspense and anticipation to see if his shot falls. And then the defender, Joel Embiid, who's seven foot two, is also looking back to see if the shot is made. Frozen Two great moment, photos. Frozen moments. At your home, or I'm not sure how many homes you have, but at your home, which photos from various projects are immortalized on your wall, or art pieces that fans have made or studios have made for you are on the walls of your home? Mm, well, uh, I'm trying to think of a, of a photograph that, uh, that I like from my career. You know, I don't really have a career wall like that too much. Um, I... Uh, I guess it was more the automobiles and vehicles, oh. uh, yeah, that I kept for a while. Um, so I did have a uh, fully marked Illinois State Police Cruiser from the Blues <laughs> Brothers, which I drove around in Manhattan for many years. Really? Yeah, fully marked, police plates, everything, lights, siren, radio, speaker, the whole thing. Did you park anywhere you wanted? I used to pick up dates in it. Um, nice I work. I picked up Ellen Barkin in it uh, at the time. Uh, you know, she Sea of really- Love. Uh, like yeah. that era? Yeah, yeah. She, she's a good friend, and uh, I picked her up in the police car. And then, uh, let's see, um, 
Yeah, I guess uh, it was more than the memorabilia that, that from the from the from those like vehicles and that kind of stuff uh, that I've I've had. I'm trying to think of another vehicle that I scored from a movie. Who has the Ghostbusters car? Did the well, studio have it or uh, any of the Sony, actors? Sony uh, Pictures has one, and then they're uh, they're they're restoring three of them now, uh, rebuilding three of them for the the new film. The new Jason Reitman Ghostbusters movie, which is going to be so great. Wait, they're making a sequel with with the same cast? Uh, with uh, or with, new uh, or well or uh, passing the torch to a younger uh, generation, but uh, but you know more than that, I really can't say. But uh, but it's it's gosh, it's such a heartfelt, wonderful story. We were all very moved when we saw it, and the actor one, uh, well, you know. We're hoping, you know, we'll, along with other friends, we'll make it make an appearance. We, again, it's up to Mr. Reitman, and, and the script is not finished totally. But we're we're excited about uh, its reality now. We're getting a new Ghostbusters, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yes, um, you're you're possibly very hard to shop for. <laughs> well, I don't know, because like, what do you get the what do you get the guy that's got everything, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, and, well. and and your friends, uh, you know, I'm sure they well, they know cards. you very well. Just what? Gasoline cards. <laughs> <laughs> just pinups and carburetors and just like just parts yeah. for automobiles. Gas cards, just you know, Petro uh, Canada one hundred dollar gas card. I, I oh, love gas that. cards like yeah, that. Gasoline, oh, my yeah, yeah, yeah. Those you know, like the cards. You know, you get but, them on the credit card refund. You get your gas cards. Yeah, a lot. That's you can give anybody. You know, you can give the wealthiest man in Canada that he'll go thank you and pocket that on it right away. <laughs> In the movie The Campaign, you and John Lithgow play nefarious political power brokers, mm-hmm. the Mach brothers, mm-hmm. uh, in a parody of real life, the Koch brothers, who are... Maybe. Bil- Maybe. Yes. Okay, they're billionaire Republican power brokers. Right on. No, you guys, it was a pretty good portrayal. Yeah, it was um, a fun movie, that. Scam Brady's done. He doesn't have this district locked up anymore. Let's get Brady out of there. Finance someone will be a friend of the Machs and help us change these regulations. Who do we have down there that we could run? Oh, big Jim sentenced in prison for embezzling state lottery funds. Sad. Oh, Raymond Huggins' boy, Marty. Isn't he the weird one? Has weird ever stopped us before? How in the year 2012 do they still have an answering machine? The film is is, uh, is cartoonish in its portrayal of a state election in the North Carolina district. Yeah. Performances by Will Ferrell, Zach Galifianakis yeah. are very strong. Yeah. And there it was in the wheelhouse of their peak powers. Could you have imagined? that real life would have mirrored uh, that movie in the 2016 presidential campaign? Well, look, private interests have had an impact on politics for many, many years, going back into many administrations. Money buys power, and money buys power in Ottawa and in Washington and in every other capital of the world, and it's not really not really a shock to me. It's just, I guess, what, what is really surprising now is the volume and the uh, the measure of the money that's being poured in, and these right. guys have billions and billions to drive their agenda. Now you saw what happened in Alabama. Oh, this that's is setting civil rights back for 150 years. Yep. And um, uh, I say to any, come to Canada, come to Canada. We'll take care of you here because we are a tolerant, tolerant and reasonable country. You know, so 100. Uh, percent Yeah, it's it's time to open a home for Alabamian women who uh, who need services and uh and you know we'll we'll do it here humanely and properly and legally you know if the roles were reversed that would it would never be an issue women mm-hmm. are just so much more like it's just thoughtful and, yeah. and empathetic so, and like they recognize that our bodies are our own and why why are we legislating women's right bodies on, man. they should have that power they have the power over their bodies and over any and any intimacy they should have that 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 you know is available to them that should be under their control, right? Hundred percent. Well, and and but th- th- these these this measure in Alabama was funded by, you know, really right wing, powerful, uh, wealthy interests to, to get this to happen. So wow, it's just astounding. I would unbelievable. The kind of guys, unfortunately, you've played in cinema a few times. Well, it was fun. <laughs> those those two were real villains, and of course, well, I love <laughs> Death Cow, and I love Will Ferrell and, and uh, Galifianakis. Love working with the new generation. That was a uh, that was a good, worthy picture. A lot of fun, a lot of laughs. They were amazing. It's right? it's underrated. Okay, speaking of the younger generation, you had a you worked on the film Tammy with Melissa McCarthy, who one of my Ghostbusters ladies, man. That's right, yeah, man. Though, and the girls were great in that movie. It was a good picture. She is a tour de force, and I'm sure. You were one of her inspirations comedically, you know, your generation of performers. SNL. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Tammy, you rehabilitated? I guess. Then let's go home. Wherever that is. Yeah, I'm not too happy with Greg. 
Yeah, me either. Look, uh, you want me to take care of that wiggly little mother for you? What? I'll go over there and kill him for you right now. I'm old. I don't care if I go to jail. They got magazines in there, don't they? Oh, I thought you were serious for a minute. You're kidding, right? I'm sure actors want to geek out with you all the time just to tell old stories or your experiences on, on projects. So who do you geek out with when, when you're on, on various film sets or TV sets? Mm. Well, um, on the film Sneakers, I worked with Sidney Poitier, Robert Redford, you know, and um, that was pretty neat, you know, uh, talking to them about their experiences and, and Legends. Sydney. Legends. Who in a, there's one scene in the movie where we're running back to the uh, the surveillance van and uh, and you know uh, I, that was a while ago and I was more youthful then but he beat me every time every time <laughs> oh like an actual oh, foot he, race oh yeah oh no we had to run back to the van in the scene and he I and I, I you know I said I gotta you know I, I'm I'm gonna really run here he's beating me he's beating me he beat me every time <laughs> it was so fun that movie was 91 ish 92 uh, something like that Phil Robinson a uh, wonderful filmmaker he made Field of Dreams it's a good movie about the NSA about the uh, surveillance also worked with Sir Richard Attenborough on the film Chaplin so I got to talk to him about you know Bridge on the River Kwai and working with David Lean and and all the work he did in The Great Escape, and you know, oh, it was just so, so neat. So geeking out with Sir Richard Attenborough was, was a, a special time, too. Very cool, very cool. What's the movie that your schedule didn't permit you to do, or for some reason you just didn't, it, it didn't fit for you that you turned down, which later you look back like, oof, mm, that was a... I never really, uh, I, I got, I seize the right opportunities there really isn't one that i can think of that i passed up on okay well then yeah. you don't have you don't have big regrets uh not like uh, about, some other no, not, not no not really in the not really there no i think will smith turned down the matrix and i mm. think uh denzel washington turned down seven and uh well that wouldn't hurt denzel um and thank god i mean look how great keanu was of course now will smith is going to be amazing in aladdin this movie's coming out as the genie that's a you're you're very generous this is awesome uh, he is you're not so, like a jaded actor oh he's fantastic he is and he, he's gonna sing he's so funny and he's gonna sing the song the famous song and he's it's just it's just gonna be just it's gonna light up the box office and light up the world this performance by will smith coming up in in aladdin and i don't have any interest there i'm not a disney stock <laughs> i am a will smith fan me I too love all of his work i think he's just terrific and you know what he's one of the greatest guys too and that family is really that's the type of family that you want to empower in hollywood him and Jada, you know, you want you want that that those families empowered. That's where you want the power to be with guys and like that and Denzel and The Rock. Nice, nice. Oh yeah. Speaking of funny, uh, you and your friends are figuratively the Hall of Fame of funny. Martin Short, Bill Murray, Steve Martin, um, and for people listening, everybody has a friend in that group in like their group that is that just has like a few more of the funnier lines or just like one one person that just elevates the group who is that for you amongst martin the, short marty yeah, huh? you get him with all those people that you mentioned and more in a room and it, we're all watching him he's outstanding he's just like so funny he can sing he can dance he can do impressions he's the most talented of all of the of, of everyone that ever ever came out of the second city and snl and uh, and other shows, he's he's just just like the strongest one, and everybody loves being around him. He's so <laughs> hilarious, really. And man, can he hold his own in a room full of comedians? You know, yeah, he he gets us all rocking. There's uh, I've heard, or maybe I read in uh, Esquire or something about him. He would just have like he would say, "Come to the house," and he would be hosting like parties or whatever. And it's like a thing to be invited to Martin Short's house because you know that you you don't even have to say anything. You're just gonna get. A show, basically, for oh, yeah. an hour or two hours or three hours or whatever Great Christmas it is. parties. Well, 1063 Avenue Road here in Toronto should have a plaque on it because that's where John Candy, Martin Short, Gilda Radner, Jerry Salzburg, Eugene Levy, Dave Thomas, Rick Moranis, myself, uh, Gilda, I said, and, and, and many of others associated with uh, the Godspell and Second City, Valerie Bromfield. We all hung out in the basement of that house, singing, dancing, playing, Marianne McDonald, Rosemary Radcliffe. Uh, all Gene and Ka as I said, and uh, we uh, Catherine O'Hara. That was our our hang because I think Marty had rented it and uh, and uh, Candy had rented it. So there should be a plaque. The greatest comedians in Canadian history. 
partied repeatedly at 1063 Avenue Road in that basement and spent many, many hours there creating ideas, scripts, movies, everything came out of there. Are there photos that exist at this time? There or is are. like any, there I mean, back photos. then is yeah. the, were there um, video there cameras? There might have been some uh, home movies, yeah, and there were photos, uh, there are photos of uh, of, my of these brother. hangs? There's a photo of Candy and my brother down in the, in the basement of that house, yeah. yeah. They, they performed at Second City together. My brother Pete, uh, my younger brother, who was at Second City in SNL and is one of the funniest guys alive. And, Amazing. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I wish, like, whenever they invent teleporters, I would like to teleport. Give me a year range. Well, that would have been uh, 70s, like, uh, you know, sort of uh, 72, 73 kind of thing. Yeah, okay, so before I was, I'm going to go back before to before, I, yeah, before, before I was born and before I, okay. Yeah, and then yeah. just try to get invited for a hang. Uh, you know, you'd go down in the basement there, the piano would be there, and... Uh, Drinks would be served, and then somebody would start to sing, and then somebody would start to do charades, and then someone would start to do an improv, and then we'd go back to music, and it was just, you know, it was it was like having a mini a mini show in the basement, you know, with everybody doing pieces and uh, and just laughing and enjoying each other's talent and 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 the time we were living. And how cloudy was the basement? Then, um, yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty cloudy. It was, you know, Mexican dirt weed. That's all you got. You know, or, or Jamaican, uh, you know, bad weed. Ooh, now that, that's some powerful yeah, ish yeah, right there. Get, yeah, you didn't get the good stuff, you know, not really back then. <laughs> it, was, it, was pretty, it was pretty brown, you know, but uh, it, it, it did the job. Uh, when I spoke with uh, Bill Murray last year at a golf course, I asked him to rank his happy places, Wrigley Field, the Sintas Center at Xavier Wurst, Sun Coaches Basketball, mm. and the golf course. That's your first question? I thought this was supposed to be a puff piece. Wrigley Field is first because that's my family history. Uh, the Sintas Center in Cincinnati Second because that's my family history. And third is the golf course because that's my family history. So you could put them, you could shuffle them, throw them up in the air and drop them, and they would land on my family somewhere. What are some of Dan Aykroyd's happy places other than 1063 Avenue? New road on the Harley Davidson motorcycle. Oh, um, pretty much that wherever that goes, and I'm on it. Uh, I, I like that. I'm always comfortable uh, in uh, in the distillery in Newfoundland where we make Crystal Head vodka. That's a very happy place. We've got 30 people working on the line. Awesome. And we're using that beautiful, clear Newfoundland water to bring value to the product. Uh, I go into bar owners, and they say, "Well, why should I pay more for this and serve this to my clients?" Well, don't you want to give value to your customers? Don't you want to give a nice, clean Drink to your customers pure, the purest vodka on the planet. Don't they deserve the best? You know, we truck our, our mash uh, from Chatham, Kent to the ferry to take it over to Newfoundland to mix the water before it goes to the market, back over out into the market it goes. It, it, the, our vodka crosses oceans. It makes a great cocktail because there's no additives Ooh, in it. So yes. I love, the, uh, I love the, uh, the distillery. That's a happy place for me. And I guess uh, my old, the old haunted farmhouse in Kingston. There are... So many more gems to come with Dan Aykroyd. A quick reminder, the archives of Cabby Presents are waiting to be devoured by you on TSN's YouTube page. There are video podcasts and 49 million segments to dive into. So when you have some time, spend some time. In the second half of this combo, Caesars are brought into the studio, and it's my first time trying the popular hangover cure. Now, uh, wait till this burns down. This is <laughs> take the lemon wedge, discard, please, because there's uh, lead in that uh, sparkler. That's the Golden Caesar we're celebrating with. Golden Caesar. Or Golden Caesar. Watch out. I just uh, burned myself. Uh, did Did you? Ah, uh, yeah, but it's okay. I have more you fingers. See, we, it's because it's the 50th anniversary. We felt we needed some kind of a birthday candle we or did. something. But I warn people, don't do this at home. Anyway, it's got the, <laughs> What you'll notice is it's got it's got the clamato, the Mott's clamato, which is the only uh, topper to make a Caesar with. It's got the rimmer, the Mott's clamato rimmer, uh, the salt around the uh, the edge of the glass. It's got two beans in there, uh, Tabasco, Worcestershire sauce, a little uh, white wine, Dan Aykroyd Sauvignon Blanc from my address, <laughs> and then the, the rosemary, so that when you sip it, you get a nose of the rosemary. So go okay, have a sip. Cheers to you, my mm, my, my dude. Yeah. You know, I've never had a Caesar before. Oh. And this is usually what people, like, chase the dog with the next day after, like, That's a right. night out but of uh, festivity. it's national drink. The 50th anniversary uh, of, of the Caesar is this year. It was invented in Alberta and uh, by a guy who had a vongole clam recipe in a, in a pasta sauce. He saw that bubbling on the stove. Thought, hey, I, I like the smell. I like the taste of that. And so he added vodka. And, uh, and so uh, Clamato is the perfect. It's the only topper for, for Caesar because it's got the clam juice uh, in it. Well, and, thank you uh, for this. In the States, they don't know what a Caesar is. They, they don't? don't? No. You, know, you go for a Caesar, they give you a salad. 
know, <laughs> uh, they don't know about about our wonderful national drink here. So, so. what do they call the this? Like, what do they call this in the U.S.? Like a, a mm. version similar to this? A Bloody Mary. Oh, uh, okay. But but really, the only way to do it is with the the rimmer from from the Mott's company, and then the clamato, and then. Crystal Head makes such a good cocktail because it's there's no additives. So many additives are going in this Worcestershire sauce, the pickled beans, the rosemary, the sparkler, the r- rimmer, that you want to work with a, a vodka that has a base. That's why bartenders love Crystal Head because they know that they're purveying you know quality, and 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 purity and a clean canvas to, to do their drinks with. Thank you. So we are enjoying a couple of Caesars. Um, I do own, I have a, a bottle of Crystal Head on, in my kitchen, oh, which I, I which I enjoyed a couple of weekends ago. So thank you very oh, much. Yeah, you'll notice it's, it's our notes are sweet, vanilla, dry, crisp, with a kick of heat off the finish. We've won more medals than any vodka on the planet. We've got 11 really? gold medals. Yep. We won the Prodexpo in Moscow. Out of 400 beverages, we won excellent taste. So... If the Russians don't know vodka, the Japanese don't know their sushi, right? <laughs> and the Swedish uh, don't know their traffic fines. I mean, uh, you know, it's like $10,000 you go through a red light there. But, in Sweden? Uh, yeah. Oh, but, yeah, you but, don't want to mess around. So, uh, w- th- that's the thing about Crystal Head is it, it's universally recognized as really a great product. And I love going around the world to 70 countries where we are and saying, it's Canadian. Nice. Yeah. Uh, you're, speaking of Canadian, your birthday is July 1st. I was Which born is... on July 1st in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, the grandson of a Royal Canadian Mounted Police Staff Sergeant, the the son of a French-Canadian mother and a white Anglo-Saxon pro, uh, Protestant uh, father. So it was like a mixed marriage back in the 50s. Yeah, and, I'm not sure that there's anyone more Canadian uh, than I'm you. Pretty much Canadian, yeah. Pretty uh, much Canadian. Yeah. You're like 1,000% I think five, Canadian. five uh, minutes after midnight on July 1st, I was born right there, yeah. So, yeah. Dad worked for the first Trudeau, and I worked for the government. I worked for the Canadian Penitentiary Service, the Solicitor General, the Department of Public Works, the uh, Department of Transport. Um, let's see. Uh, who, Sorry, oh, you or your dad? Your, your I dad? Did. Oh, you did. Yeah, what? I, when? Yeah. Like, when did you have time to do it? When you well, were when I was, you know, in the in the '70s, prior to Second City, and when I was in college, and, and prior to at Carleton, and you know, in the, in the late '60s and, and early '70s, I had some summer jobs, great summer jobs. Love, love that. <laughs> <laughs> I love working up north. I love uh, going out to Alberta, man, and, and working. I worked up north in the Fort Liard Oil Road. I was a, a flex track mechanic and a surveyor, and I got to see, you know, white ravens and, and wolves and, and, and you know, just be exposed wait, to Wait, wait, ravens are white, some of them? Well, the one we saw once was, yeah. I mean, talk about an omen. In indigenous native country, you know, you see a white raven. That was pretty exciting. I wonder what it like. Is wonder if it has any sort of good omen. spiritual. Man, power. Oh, Ackroyd, it's a good you're omen. Okay, be all right, Ackroyd, you're gonna be all right. <laughs> and you, you were, and me, it worked buddy. out. It worked out. Yeah. For many Canadians, July first is uh, the big weekend. But I, th- I feel like Victoria Day, May two four weekend, might be considered even more of a Canadian. Where weekend. is she though? Where is she? She never showed up for any of my parties. Victoria, where are <laughs> What we're celebrating? What the Puritan Victoria? Wait a minute. Come right. Uh, she, she swung. She had fun. She, oh, she had a boyfriend she, after uh, Albert died. She did. Yeah. Um, um, Brown was his name. He was a. Yeah, he was a Scot. I don't so really know that won. much about the, the yeah. monarchy. So, okay, let's say, you know, Victoria, you know what? She kind of, I guess she was a sex machine when you think about it. <laughs> yeah, so good. Victoria's birthday. We'll, we will celebrate that. Uh, yeah, that's a so thing to toast. Is the Caesar the super Canadian drink that you will be delivering, like, on Victoria Day weekend or, or your birthday? Well, is this the drink that you're making for what, your guests? What's great about this at this time of year is we've had a really tough winter here. Mm-hmm. And we need a little heat and spice in our lives. So May 16th, National Caesar Day. This is the anniversary of it. Definitely, I'll be serving this all summer at my farm and uh, on my dockside. Um, and, you know, uh, it, it, it really is, uh, it's perfect for guests. It's kind of like, as you see, it's, it's got food in it. And, and I think that uh, for May 24th, it's, it's, it's a proper thing to, to, to toast the oncoming spring and the end of winter. But there's other ways to drink a crystal head. What I like to do is I just like to shake it. Put it in a, up in a glass uh, uh, with ice chips and a twist. It, 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 it you, you go. What is this? Is this water? Is there alcohol in this? It's so clean. Now the height of your powers have, have lasted decades. Um, do you remember an era or a time where the generosity from bar owners or from the public, from your fans, was so much so that you literally never had to reach into your your pocket to pay for anything? And what part of either Canada or the United States? Did you feel the most generosity from the public? Well, you know, I have been offered rounds of drinks and that, and what, can I buy you a drink and that? And 
Sometimes I, I will decline if I've had you know, too many, or, and I, I don't want to. I, I consume moderately alcohol, but I, if I have to operate a machine, I will, you know, maybe decline, or I will take the drink. But it more works in the reverse for, for me because um, oh. I, along with Isaac Tigret and a couple other guys, uh, and we started the House of Blues down there in the United States. So I ha I end up buying a lot of rounds for people and a lot of drinks and a lot of food for people, you know, because I love our guests at House of Blues and I love those clubs. So I'll go in there and I'll see a, a busload of people, you know, tourists, and I'll buy them, you know, I'll comp them. So... You know, spend so it did actually work in, in your I, favor. I, I, you know, my I, I kind of you didn't I, use I'm your the powers one then. The I'm the one buying the rounds. I'm the one buying the the, the drinks and the rounds and that and the food and that's that's okay. That's okay. You're I, very as, you're... as a hosteler and a kind of a <laughs> founder of House of Blues. That's my duty. You know, I want them to try the the wings. I want them to try the burgers. I want them to try all the food. I want them to come and listen to the music. So. So I am. I'm. I'm. It kind of works the other way. I. I. You know. I'm. I'm more less the recipient than the uh, the donor. You just want to make sure everybody has a good time. You're the party starter. I've always been. My dad trained me to do that, man. He he worked in public relations and and uh, he 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 knew how to throw a party. He threw Canada's centennial party. He was the director of public relations for 1967. You know the song Canada, the symbol, uh, all the grants across Canada, 80 million dollars. In grants, he dispensed, uh, you know, mostly for hockey arenas. But anyway, you know, memorial, <laughs> centennial memorial hockey arena. But, you know, he threw a party for the whole country, and he he taught me really how to how to take care of people at a party. So I am I am a good host, no doubt. You really are the most Canadian of all the Canadians. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'm proud of that. Nice, yeah. as you should be. But I love Americans too. I do. I love them. I don't think we have enough of them up here. I think they should come up and see what we have. We embrace them, you know, and um, and they need our love right now. Yes, in a, in a troubling times down south. Um, lastly, this book, The Caesar, 50 Years, 50 Stories. You are featured in this in this, uh, in this this book. The, oh, here you are. Mm. Collection of stories from um, famous people and people that like to have a good time. So um, I gotta, I don't know if, I'm going to keep this, yeah, this one. Yeah, I'll and, sign it for you. Everybody has a Caesar story, you know. because This is my right first, actually. and my first Caesar I get to share with the legendary Dan well, Aykroyd. So this, I delicious? actually have the best Caesar I mean, story. Isn't that delicious, the spiciness, the, the you know. Try the bean. We eat the bean? Yeah. Mm hmm. Are you supposed to do that? Mm hmm. Sorry if you're listening to this. Oh, I just yeah. hear the crunching into the microphone. It's delicious. Salty, which I like. Matt and Steve's pickled bean. <laughs> Dan Aykroyd, where can people uh, follow your life on the socials if you are on social media, mm. on Twitter or Instagram? World Wide Web, crystalheadvodka.com. Okay. Um, we got a lot going on there. And I think. Uh, you know, my, I think I'm, I'm, I'm under my own name and under Facebook and all that. And I think it's, yeah. It's are you on Instagram or Twitter, sir? Um, I don't do that too much. When things are special, I do that. Okay. Um, but, but we're on the website for the vodka mainly. That's where I, I am mostly right now. And I'm sure people will enjoy your vodka all summer long as we look forward to glorious sunshine, wonderful parties, and time well spent with friends. This was time well spent for me. It was an honor to meet you. Thank you so much, Dan. And a Raptors victory. Yes, yes. Right on.